Types of arguments. Before we move on, we need to know what is an argument, including things like premises, conclusions, and inference indicators. So if you need a review or you don't know what is an argument, go ahead and click on this icon on the top right corner of the video to view the video on arguments. Now we need to know a couple of terms before we learn the different types of arguments. Those terms are specific and general. Specific means a particular or distinct individual example. And general means dealing with universal aspects or characteristics about groups of things like people or places or things or ideas or words or whatever other types of groups. Here are examples of specific cars. Now notice, they all are different designs. They all have different colors. Some have back seats, some don't. The tire designs are different. Some have large grills, some have small grills. Now, these are specifics. They are particular or distinct individual examples of cars. But what they all have in common are their general characteristics, like wheels, body, windows, a steering wheel, and seats. All cars have these general aspects. So what they have in common is what is general between them. Here are some specific pencils. One is gold, one is silver. One is wood, one is mechanical. They have different designs, but there are things they have in common, like lead, the body, and the eraser. Those are general aspects of pencils. So the difference between general and specific is, general is universal characteristics about groups of things, like people, places, or things. But specific are particular examples of people, or places, or things. So we saw some specific cars, but what they all had in common, that is the universal characteristics they share, the general characteristics. We saw different types of pencils, specific types of pencils. But what they had in common are their general characteristics. What they have in common, that is what's general for all pencils. Now, it's important to know these terms because the two types of arguments we will look at today both deal with general and specific observations. So deductive arguments starts off with general ideas or facts and then leads on to a specific conclusion. But inductive arguments, but inductive arguments start off with specific observations and those lead to general conclusions. Here's an example of a deductive argument. So first off, we start with a very general premise. All men are mortal. This is general for all humanity. They're immortals. But premise two is getting more specific. Socrates is a man. So now we're dealing with one individual named Socrates. And from this, we can conclude Socrates is immortal. That's a very specific conclusion. So we started off with a very general statement, a very general claim that all men are mortal. And we ended with a very specific conclusion that Socrates is immortal. It works actually based on the structure. So since we made a claim about all men, and Socrates is a man, then that claim for all men, which is their mortal, applies to Socrates. So that's why Socrates is immortal, because he's one out of the many people that make up the group called men, and all men, it's true for all men, general statement, they're mortals. So all men are mortal, Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is immortal. Now, a deductive argument has only two premises and one conclusion. The first premise is called the major premise, which was the very general statement like we saw. The second statement is called the minor premise, which is a more specific statement. But the conclusion is a very specific statement in this type of argument. So all men are mortals, that was the major premise. That was the general statement. Socrates is a man was the minor premise. That's a more specific statement. And Socrates is immortal. That was the conclusion, which was a very specific statement. Here's an example of an inductive argument. 
Premise, there has been little rainfall in California from 2011 to 2016. Notice, this statement is dealing with specific observations. Five years worth of specific observations about rainfall in California. So the conclusion of this argument was, there will not be much rainfall in California in 2017, which is a general statement. It's general about the year 2017 in California. Now, inductive reasoning is the basis of science, as you see from this example. But some of you are saying, wait a second, I live in California. That's not how things turned out in 2017. And you're right. If you live in California or you follow the news if you live in other states, California saw so much rainfall in 2017 like it had never seen for several years before that it came out of a drought that it was in for six years just because of the rainfall it saw in California in early 2017. But wait a sec, doesn't science tell us things that are reliable? Yes, but it's based on inductive reasoning. You have to look at specific examples. And any one example that comes in, any one fact that comes in, it can change your conclusion. Now, this is the difference between deductive and inductive arguments. If the premises in a deductive argument are true, then the conclusion is necessarily true. It must be true. But in an inductive argument, if the premises are true, like in the example we saw, then the conclusion is likely true. Because if we get more facts, more observations, it can change our conclusions. Again, it can or it can confirm what we already saw, but it can change our conclusions if we get new facts that we had not taken into account before. A deductive argument usually has two premises per conclusion, but an inductive argument, the number of premises can differ in that. A deductive argument is very powerful, but it's limited in its usage. It's powerful because, like you saw, if the premises are true, then the conclusion must be true. But an inductive argument is less powerful, because if we get more facts, they could probably change our conclusion. Not all the time, but sometimes. However, inductive arguments are more widely used. They can be used in many different situations. That's why science is based on inductive arguments. Trivia. Aristotle, who was a philosopher and scientist in the 4th century BC, documented both deductive and inductive argumentation. He really laid the foundation for understanding this up until our days. And he traced inductive reasoning, which is argumentation, back to Socrates, who was a 5th century BC philosopher, because Socrates had sought to arrive at general definitions of concepts, like justice and virtue, from observing many specific examples of justice and virtue. Click here to watch more videos on arguments. Thanks for watching. Until next time.